Hi people, welcome to my channel. I am Arpita Karva and today is one of the most important days in my career because it was the day when UGC NET exam was conducted and it's always a very special day for teachers like us who are uh, preparing students for competitive exam. The day when the exam is conducted and the day when the result is released. Both these days are very important to us. They are like the D days of our life because we put in so much efforts and we we deeply feel for our students that we are very eager to know how they have performed. So there are these uh, anxiety bubbles which are there in our heart. We are nervous that how the paper would be and how our students would be performing. And today I'm really, really, really happy because students have reported that the paper was amazing they were extremely happy to see the paper and number two the paper was from what we have taught them so these are the two big things which just happened and i'm really really excited about the same last year in june 2019 150 plus students qualified net from my batch and it was a big day a big celebration at the office of arpatakarva.com and this time after knowing the paper from my students i'm sure that the number is going to cross 200 because students said that ma'am you have done a fabulous job in teaching british literature 80 percent paper was from british literature and you've given us three 50 lectures where you've talked about each and everything and that is the reason why I keep on emphasizing whenever a student asks me that ma'am uh, there are like 850 lectures in your course and 350 is just in one module that is British literature why why so and I always tell them that English literature is more or less about British literature even if the syllabus changes they are going to keep on uh, focusing on British literature and that is the reason why all the minor writers as well as major writers I cover them in detail because I know that writers like Christopher E. Sherwood they've asked they have asked writers like Thomas Quincy these minor writers people are not even aware of in guidebooks there is no mention of these writers and they are asking questions from that so only students who have done the right preparation and done it rightly in the right path they've done the smart work can do really nice in the paper and I'm really happy that the students have outperformed this time. Now before putting any more time in talking about how excited I am I would just like to directly talk about the paper. I have uh, asked questions from students and on the basis of that I have uh, made an analysis of paper 2 uh, which happened today and I'm going to share that with you and towards the end I'm going to share what according to me should be the expected cut off this time so that you can know whether you fall in that category or not. Also before that if you've not yet watched my video on how the paper one was according to me how I think uh, was the difficulty level of the questions then you must go to my channel and watch it. Also there are a lot of uh, important days coming up right uh, next week there would be the day when the question paper would be released answer key would be released so if you want to get updates about the same if you want to know uh, the official question paper date answer key revised answer key when the result is releasing please follow me on my facebook as well as instagram the link is arpata karva you just need to type arpata karva you'll get my page follow me on those platforms because i keep on posting important updates there if you've not done it right now then make sure you pause the video just go and follow me on those pages and come back right here and watch the video till the end Okay, so the first important group I would like to talk about from where seven to eight questions were asked this time is literary groups and movements. Guys, if you've ever visited my website arpatakarva.com, you must have seen there's a module, module number nine, literary groups and movement. And to all my students, I keep on saying that you cannot miss that module because it is important. Even if it's mentioned in the syllabus or not, they are going to ask questions from that. And it's very easy module because you just need to remember the names of the writers who fall in any of that literary group. For example, Lost Generations, who are the writers who are a part of Lost Generation. You just need to remember their names. It is that simple because nobody actually takes an effort to teach you this that is why you never get it right on the day of the exam and you keep on wondering okay what is this jazz age i've never heard it so please make sure that if you've not yet uh, gone through the movements i have mentioned in module number nine you do it because that is where 
uh, you get your marks. This time, seven to eight questions were asked from literary groups. So they were asking questions on jazz age, lost generation, angry young man, university wits, kitchen sink drama, Puritan age. So you can see they are asking questions from these minor, minor literary groups, which you sometimes miss out. So make sure that you study from that uh, list, which I've given on my website. And all my students, they were saying that, ma'am, we actually mugged up those names and there were seven direct questions. We're so happy about it. So I really wish that the same thing happens with you too. Make sure that you go through uh, these writers and prepare yourself well for the next exam. Coming on to the next topic, which is questions from William Shakespeare. Now, last year, a lot of students said that there were questions from the quotations. They were asking quotes and they were asking, okay, who said to whom in which particular play of Shakespeare. This time, there was a slight difference. Rather than focusing on quotations, they were focusing more on the characters. So, there was a match the following question where you had to match the characters with the play. So, Goneril was asked uh, and we all know that it was a character from King Lear and then another question was from love labor lost then another question was about Ariel that Ariel is not a character in which of the following works so as you can see that important characters of Shakespeare must be remembered in my course I give 18 lectures on Shakespeare people sometimes say that ma'am it's been three days we've been only listening to your lectures and reading about Shakespeare and that is the reason why he's important because if you look at a writer like Shakespeare there are three four questions directly asked from that and if you just go through those audio lectures you sorted you will not be afraid that okay what am I going to do with the 38 plays he has written because we know that from which play what kind of questions can be asked coming on to the third topic but before that I would also like to mention that there were questions from early theatre if you remember in module one British literature there's a special um, special audio lecture which I give on early Elizabethan theatre where I talk about miracle morality plays and there I mentioned the writer Thomas Hayward from which they have never asked a question but this time there was a question and if you remember the names of the two works of Thomas Hayward you could have easily got those two marks so that was important another important question that was asked was the important Elizabethan actors. So last year there were questions on the important uh, plays as an important stage that were made. So these were playhouses where plays were conducted. So they were asking us names of Rose, Swan, all those theatres. This time this switch shifted a bit and talked about the Elizabethan actors. So uh, if you remember in my lecture, I talked about Richard Burbage. Okay. And I talked about other important Elizabethan actors. So you can see how they are asking questions which are not difficult, but you should know the right strategy to get to those questions. Coming on to the third important section, which is chronological based questions. Oh my God, I was surprised when the students were telling me that there were somewhere around 15 questions based on chronology. Uh, and you'll be surprised to know that, you know, uh, I have this habit of making my notes from which I teach students. So what I do is I always tell students that you don't need to mug up the dates, publication dates of the works because it's not possible. There are five, six thousand works and you can't remember the dates of all of them. But a very simple strategy is when you actually put the plays or the works in the chronological order. So for example, you are reading T.S. Eliot. So if you want to write all his plays, you write in the chronological order and that is how you form your own notes. And that is how I teach in my course. So if you look at the notes that I've just displayed on the screen, you will see that I am displaying each and every work uh, just one after the other. So if you have a photographic memory and you have my notes in front of you, you'll understand that, okay, this was the first one, this was the second one, this was the third one. So even if you don't remember the publication date, you can get those questions right. So there were direct chronological questions from the works of Charles Dickens, from D.H. Lawrence, from T.S. Eliot, from R. K. Narayan, all the major ones. See, we all study so much about them. We study all the works of T.S. Eliot. We mug up the entire wasteland, but we don't focus that they can even ask questions from this so my students they said that you know ma'am you have this pattern of teaching uh, because of which we had those things in our memory and we could just get it right we don't have to even see the options we were knowing that okay iske baad is ye, iske baad ye, iske baad ye. another interesting chronological based question was asked on these works so there were works like paradise lost 
Danciard. Then there were works from Romantic Age. Now you must be wondering that okay, these are from different writers. How am I going to know how to fit them in chronology? Now it's very simple. Uh, you know, there is a work from Neoclassical. There's a work from Romantic. There's a work from Victorian. So you automatically know in which order they are going to be. So if you look at my module one, that is British literature, you will see that I have this chronology in which I'm teaching. Even if the syllabus has changed, now the syllabus is more into poetry, drama, fiction, non-fiction. I keep on telling my students that go by the chronology. Don't go by poetry, reading some absurd poetry here and there. Study according to what I have given you. So there are these 350 lectures in chronology. So once you go through those lectures, you know the exact chronology and those 15 questions you can never get wrong because it is there in your DNA and they are very simple. Like if you look at these chronological questions, a person who has studied these writers in detail and in a systematic order will automatically get it right. So make sure that next time when you're making your notes, you go through the chronological order so that you exactly know which work comes after which. Next question is the questions based on Old and Middle English. Now from Old and Middle English, every time they ask like three, four questions, the same pattern was followed even this time. One question was from John Gover, who is a Middle English writer. One question was from Old English. So there was a character name given uh, and there were four options, Piers, Plowman, and then we had uh, Beowulf and you have to figure out this character is in which work. So whenever I teach Old English, I make sure that I give students those major names. You don't need to read old english in detail but remember the important protagonist important antagonist two questions from canterbury tale one of them i think is wrong because a lot of students said that they've mentioned that in canterbury tales how many tales are there and how many pilgrims are there and pilgrims ke jo option the, they were either 22 or 23 now the correct answer would be 29 pilgrims but since they've not included that i think bonus marks would be given and they were asking about the tale in which a boy was murdered. So there was a Jewish boy who was murdered in which tale that happened. If you remember, there's a YouTube video in which I've talked about this. There's a video I posted long back on Canterbury Tale where I discussed this. And even in my audio lecture on Canterbury Tale, I talk about all these important tales, wife of Bath, prioress, nun priest tale. So you should know. It's not that you have to know each and every tale of Paradise Lost, but the important ones you should know because that is how you get marks if you know them. So if we now move a little bit towards the other important literatures like American, post-colonial, European and Indian, I would say that this time the number of questions that were asked from these four units were less as we've seen the same trend in the last uh, June exam as well. There were very few questions asked from uh, post-colonial. I think there was negligible uh, amount of questions in the European section. But then there was an important question in Indian literature which a student has told me. There was a question I think was about Nazim Ezekiel and some collection of his uh, poetry, poetry collection. So make sure that you don't neglect it all together you have to do it though you just need to focus a lot more on British and less on these four units coming on to the next section which is criticism literary criticism now this time if you look at the paper you will figure out that they were not asking questions from the modern critics like Samuel Johnson or Matthew Arnold or T.S. Eliot just like they were asking earlier this time their focus was on classical ones so there were questions on Longinus, Sublime. There were questions on Plato, Aristotle. I think there were two or three questions on Plato. So make sure that you don't skip that. If you go to my website in module six, I've listed the important classical writers which you have to study if you want to prepare yourself thoroughly for literary criticism. There are like one, one and a half hours audio lecture which I'm giving on these writers. Some people just ignore uh, classical literature, classical uh, criticism because they think that okay let's focus on modern postmodern from there most of the questions are asking so i keep on telling that whatever i'm giving in my course i'm giving because that is how the paper would be designed so make sure that you focus on those areas coming on to the next thing theory now literary theory May agar questions achhe a jate to I think that is the biggest blessing i can have in my life because most of the students are 
extremely depressed in literary criticism and literary theory they've given almost every hope mere paas jab students mere course mein enroll karte to they're like ma'am we don't want to tell you anything just the thing is that ma'am literary theory aapne samjha diya and that is how we are going to clear net we are for sure because ye ek cheez hai jo aapko kisi book mein samajh nahi aati hai and this time they were asking literary theory and cultural studies se mila ke somewhere 15 20 questions so it is important and if you look at the list that i've given on my website literary theory ki make sure next time if you are preparing on your own make sure you go through all those writers they were asking questions from minor writers okay if you look at cultural habitat that is a very important term given by pare bolduard they were asking questions from that they were asking questions from uh, writers like julia christeva ellen show walter so these writers cannot be excluded you just need not focus on stuart hall william uh, raymond williams or derrida or foucault there are minor ones which are important from net point of view because that is how they are going to create a difference in the percentage the students who have just done the surface study just refer to one book okay they are going to only know the major ones but those who have studied from various sources though those who know what are the other writers who can fall into this particular literary uh, theory category are the ones who get the most marks so make sure you refer to my module number 7 before you start preparing for your net exam coming on to the next section there were direct questions somewhere around 40 to 50 were direct questions that were asked from major or minor british writers so students told me that there was a question which uh, was repeated from previous year muse urania muse was evoked in which of the books of paradise lost there was a question from wuthering heights from aeropegetica which is a very famous work by uh, Par- by john milton so epigraph was asked then डब्ल्यू एच ऑर्डन एंड क्रिस्टोफर ईशर वुड ने कंबाइंड दोनों ने मिलकर एक वर्क लिखा है दे वर आस्किंग द नेम ऑफ दैट वर्क देन देर वॉज अ टर्म विच आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट वेन आई वॉज टीचिंग ग्राहम ग्रीन रोमन ए क्लेफ because graham green has written a work which belongs to the genre of romanic clef and they asked what romanic clef means apartheid novels pe questions there which belongs to the modern and the post modern age so there were somewhere around 40 to 50 direct questions from british literature now direct i mean for those who know the minor and the major writers properly you must be knowing milton's paradise lost but if you don't know aeropegetica then you can't get good marks okay you must be knowing uh, writers like w h Jordan W B H, but if you don't know Christopher Isherwood, Thomas Quincy से question था on the murder पे एक book लिखा है कौन Thomas Quincy ने the question was asked that who has written this particular book. Now ये छोटी छोटी चीज़ है उन्हीं को पता होती है who know the right way to study. So make sure you keep all these things in mind. The reason why I'm analyzing the paper is to give you a method, a direct path through which you can get your next JRF. Next. important topic quotations now last year that is in june 2019 we have observed that there were so many questions from quotations like there were somewhere around 10 to 15 questions from quotations itself this time the number was reduced four five questions were asked and they were also very simple questions for example vanity fair ka last line pucha gaya tha then there were four important romantic writers unki four important lines puchi gayi thi for example we all know william wordsworth has written a poem the world is too much with us so these questions were asked. so very direct quotation based questions were asked so you need not worry some students keep on uh, telling and commenting on the youtube videos that ma'am quotations kaise yaad kare see you don't need to remember all the minor quotations sirf important ones yaad karo you will be sorted minor वैसे भी जो है ना there are so many that you can never get enough of them so opening closing lines that is what i keep on doing in my pdf sabki opening closing line jo important quotations i keep on giving i was surprised this time they were not asking questions. question from jane austen such an important writer then they were not asking any question from the important american playwrights important european playwrights so there was a complete shift towards the british literature which is even good for the students who know british literature thoroughly now coming on to the important other important modules like english in india now people create a lot of chaos english in india add hua hai 10 12 questions aayenge there were students telling that har unit se 10 questions aayenge now you can see the paper yourself there was one question from english in india okay and that was about british administrator who introduced european literature 
then there was one question from essay uh, as in the non fiction category and what was that question about you have to match the following the important story with the writer so edgar allen poe uh, house of usher likha hai so the a very simple one so do do questions bhi aa rahe hain ka units because they are focusing so much on the other units so that is important linguistics now linguistics se lang and parole pe ek question tha then there was a question uh, which was i think more इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड पेपर वन सो देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन कि आपको लैंग्वेज टीचिंग को क्रोनोलॉजी में डालना है एच टी एम एल कब आया फेसबुक कब आया स्काइप कब आया सो यू हैव टू पुट इट इन क्रोनोलॉजी सो इट वॉज अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन यू ऑलवेज यू मस्ट बी नोइंग दिस थिंग एच टी एम एल सबसे पहले आया है एंड देन फेसबुक आया होगा सो यू कैन पुट इट लाइक थ्रू योर कॉमन सेंस ऑल्सो सो लिंग्विस्टिक्स में मुझे ऐसा कुछ नहीं लगा जो थोड़ा भी ट्रिकी था बट येस अ स्टूडेंट रिपोर्टेड दैट दो बार एक क्वेश्चन रिपीट हुआ है देर वॉज अ क्वेश्चन दैट टीचिंग मेथडोलॉजी कौन सी अप्रोप्रिएट होती है इन द एज ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन एंड दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज रिपीटेड ट्वाइस आई डोंट नो वेदर दैट हैपन विद एवरी सेट और जस्ट विद दैट स्टूडेंट सेट सो इफ दैट इज हैपनिंग देन इफ यू गेट इट राइट यू गेट फोर मार्क्स इंस्टेड ऑफ टू now another important and interesting thing that was added this time which they were asking 2016 17 mein but thode saal se nahi puch rahe the and that was about popular magazines now if you remember in my last unit okay research i have given us miscellaneous category chapter where i have given a complete audio lecture on popular magazines and publications and there i talk about tatler rambler idler guardian magazine who were the major contributors and this time three questions were asked one question was asking that tatler kon kon se days mein week mein publish hoti and kitne editions total hue the then another was to put all these magazines in chronological order and another was matched the following there were four magazines and four contributors four uh magazines and contributors you have to match them together so you can see that a single audio can fetch you like 6 marks if you focus on what i'm teaching so the paper was pretty easy i can say that this time they have reduced the type of questions which were found nowhere ki ye achanak se kaise pucha jaisa a student reported that there was a question on pamphlet ki pamphlet mein minimum or maximum kitne pages ho sakte hain now this was a question which was not there in my course because i never thought that it was important enough but this kind of questions can come do se teen questions aise hote hain but then this time the number was very less kai baar 10 se 12 hote hain but do baar se june mein bhi 95% questions was as per what i have been teaching in my course and i proudly say that even this time the score remains the same so it's a very uh, proud feeling for a teacher that what we are teaching is actually and directly helping students to get net and finally if we talk about reading comprehension so this time rather than one they were asking three reading comprehension ek se teen question the ek se do the aur ek se ek tha now one question was from some classical play i don't remember the student has not yet told me the name but they were asking uh, a classical play ka extract deke that in mein kya bola gaya hai now another question was from reading comprehension where they have given some uh, poetry on home and uh, questions were asked on that and another one was very simple it was a very simple passage easy to read so reading comprehension mein darne ki koi baat nahi the they have given you may variety classical bhi diya hai to bahut simple bhi diya hai so they have given you variety but ओवरऑल अगर पेपर की बात करें तो आई एम रियली हैप्पी विद द काइंड ऑफ पेपर वी हैव दिस टाइम एंड इफ अ स्टूडेंट हैज वर्क रियली हार्ड आई कैन प्राउडली टेल दैट द स्टूडेंट कैन गेट समवेयर अराउंड 80 टू 90 क्वेश्चंस राइट आउट ऑफ 100 व्हिच इज अ बिग थिंग द कट ऑफ अकॉर्डिंग टू मी लुकिंग एट द पेपर एंड द क्वेश्चंस आई हैव गॉट टिल नाउ इज समवेयर अराउंड 55 टू 60 बिकॉज़ वी ऑल नो दैट स्टूडेंट्स आर नॉट ब्रिलियंट लाइक वी एज टीचर्स कैन नो अ फ्यू मोर क्वेश्चंस व्हिच स्टूडेंट्स माइट नॉट नो बिकॉज़ वी हैव गेन्ड एक्सपीरियंस इन दैट बट इवन इफ द पेपर एंड द डिफिकल्टी लेवल वाज नॉट सो गुड आई थिंक दैट इट इज वेरी इजी to score somewhere around 80 to 90 questions correct out of 100 which is a big thing so i congratulate all those who have given their 100% and achieved great results they are very happy with their uh, paper and i'm really and eagerly waiting to see at least 200 students qualifying net from my batch this is my expectation last time it was 150 plus and i'm sure that this time looking at the paper and looking at kind of questions they've asked from british literature the number would go beyond 200 so i wish you all the best 
also the registrations for the next batch that is the next june 2020 batch is open and we've got limited seats so if you want to register for our online course make sure you ping us on the whatsapp the number is right there also follow us on all the social media platforms because if you want to get updates that's the only way we can reach you so that's it for this video lecture we'll meet very soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning Keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarwar.com.